In vascular plants, the plant body consists of an axis, unbranched or branched, differentiated into an aerial stem bearing lateral appendages, the leaves, and an underground part, the root. The stem bearing leaves is called as shoot system and it gets organized during the development of embryo. The embryo shoot, which is the first bud, is commonly called as plumule and its stem is called as hypocotyle relative to the cotyledon system. The cotyledons form the first leaves of the seedling. The shoot meristem continues development of the shoot by differentiating new nodes and internodes with leaves formed at the nodes. The plants which show branched axis possess axillary buds in the axils of leaves that develop into lateral branches repeating the characters of the main axis. In most of the higher plants, the growth is confined to the tips of shoots and roots due to the presence of apical meristems. It arises as a prolongation of plumule that is one end of an embryo. It grows and bends towards light that is positively phototropic and away from gravity that is negatively geotropic. It divides into nodes and internodes. It bears leaves, branches and flowers and bears vegetative buds which may be terminal in position and called as apical bud. It is responsible for plant to grow upwards. The other vegetative buds are axillary buds which are found in the axils of leaf. The axillary buds give rise to lateral branches. It bears floral buds that is terminal or axillary in position that grows into flowers. The major organs which contribute to shoot system are the shoot apex, the stem, the leaves and the flowers. In this module, we will learn about the shoot apex and the stem in detail. The leaves and the flowers are discussed separately in other modules. The shoot apex. The shoot apex is the terminal dome shaped part of the shoot. It is made up of meristematic tissues called as apical shoot meristem. It is responsible for the development and differentiation of primary permanent tissue and mainly causes growth in length of the plant. It is self-determining and autonomous organizing center of the plant. It shows a rhythmic change in shape and size before and after initiation of leaf primordium. The apical meristem widens considerably before the initiation of the leaf and it again becomes narrow after the appearance of the leaf primordium. Different regions of vegetative shoot apex. The shoot apex can be divided into various regions according to the determined fate of the cells within each region. Central zone. This zone consists of small, undifferentiated and slowly dividing cells. Peripheral zone. This zone consists of rapidly dividing cells which will later differentiate and mature into various tissues. Organ zone. In this zone, the cells give rise to leaf primordial and these are older cells of peripheral zone. Central meristem zone. The cells of this zone give rise to the stem interior, including vascular tissues. It can be also divided into outer layers of cells, the tunica, and inner layers of cells, the corpus. Organization of shoot apex. Several theories have been put forward time to time to explain and interpret the mode of growth and organization of shoot apical meristem. These theories are the apical cell theory, the histogen theory, the tunica corpus theory. Let us study about these theories one by one. Apical cell theory. According to this theory, 
a solitary tetrahedral cell occur in the apex and cuts off daughter cells one after the other. The leaf primordial arises from the flanks of the apical meristem as bulges on the surface some distance from the apical cell. Solitary apical cells occur in many of the algae and among the lower vascular plants in Silotaceae, the horse tails, most of the ferns and species of Silaginella. It was believed that the same conditions held also for all higher plants and the apical cell theory was proposed as the basis for an understanding of the method of growth and morphology in all groups. But the shoot apices of even some pteridophytes and seed plants are found to be more complex and it became evident that the theory cannot be applied for the majority of plants. The histogen theory. As a basis for the interpretation of the growing points of seed plants, the histogen theory replaced the older apical cell theory. In 1868, Hansen distinguished three germinal layers in the shoot apex and root apex which he called as histogens. The outermost histogen was designated as dermatogen which gives rise to epidermis. The middle one as periblem which gave rise to cortex and innermost or central zone is called the pleurome which produces pith and vascular system. The histogen theory have long dominated the anatomical interpretation of tissues and organs in vascular plants but it is found that the distinction of these histogens in the apex is often not made out in an apex in some plants and in others they are found to have no morphological significance. The pleurome may form only the pith or the entire central cylinder and part of the cortex. The periblem may form cortex and the outer stellar tissues or part of the cortex. They are found to serve chiefly to indicate regions in a loose structural sense. So largely the histogen theory is used less in the interpretation of stem apex though it is still in use in the case of root apices. The tunica corpus theory. According to this theory the shoot apex is interpreted as composed of two zones only instead of three as in histogen theory. These zones are known as tunica and corpus. It was proposed by Schimmt in 1924. It is mainly applicable to leafy stem or shoot. The apical meristem of the shoot is composed of one or several layers of cells, the tunica, which encloses a central cone of tissues, the corpus. In the tunica, surface growth predominates and the cell divisions are uniformly anticlinal that is perpendicular to the surface with the result that the cells are regularly oblong in longitudinal section and each tunica layer remains distinct. In the corpus by contrast volume growth is predominant and the plane of cell division and cell arrangement is highly irregular. The great acceptance of tunica corpus theory is due to the fact that it deals with the planes of division and theoretically at any rate it can be precise. The aerial stem can be of two types, erect or strong stems and weak stems. Erect or strong stem, it grows straight upright without any kind of support above the surface of the soil. This type of stem is found in herbs, shrubs or trees. These can be further subdivided according to the strength of the stem into five types. Cordex, the unbranched, erect, cylindrical and stout stem marked with scars of fallen leaves 
is called cordex as in palms. Curm, the jointed stem with solid nodes and hollow internodes is called cum as in bamboo. Scape, scape is a long internode forming the basal part or the whole of a peduncle. Typically, it takes the form of a long leafless flowering stem rising directly from a bulb, rhizome or similar subterranean or underwater structure. Such a flowering shoot is called scape as in tuberose, onion etc. Excurrent When the main axis continues growth and the lateral branches develop regularly giving a conical appearance to the tree, for example, Polyelthia longifolia and Casuarina. Deliquescent When the main axis in growth is subordinated by more vigorously growing lateral branches giving a rounded or spreading appearance to the tree, for example, mango, teak, gold mohar, etc. Weak stem Weak stem forms are incapable of growing straight or upright without some help, for example, cascuta. These may be creepers, trailers or climbers. Creepers Weak stemmed plants with their long or short branches creeping along the ground and rooting at the nodes are said to be creepers. Such habit is found in grasses, for example, cynodon dectylon or dew, etc. These are of four types. Runner, a slender elongated prostrate aerial branch with long internodes creeping on the ground and rooting at the nodes, for example, oxalis, hydrocotyle asiatica, grasses, etc. Stolen, a slender elongated horizontal stem at or below the surface of the ground that gives rise to a new plant at its tip. For example, Dracaena, Colocasia, Tecoma grandiflora, etc. Offset A horizontal short, more or less thickened prostrate branch producing at the apex a tuft of leaves above and a cluster of small roots below. For example, Piscia, Salvinia, Icornia, etc. Sucker a creeping stem developing from the underground part of the stem but growing obliquely upwards and directly giving rise to a leafy shoot or a new plant. For example, Chrysanthemum, Mentha piperita, etc. Trailers Trailers are those plants whose thin and long or short branches trail on the ground with or without rooting at the nodes. Trailers may be procumbent, decumbent or diffuse. Procumbent When the plants lie prostrate on the ground, they are said to be prostrate or procumbent. For example, Portuleca, Bacilla, etc. Decumbent When the branches of some plants, after trailing for some distance, tend to rise at their apex, they are said to be decumbent. For example, Tridex. Diffuse. When the plants are much branched and their branches spread out on the ground in all directions, they are said to be diffuse. For example, Boravia. Climbers. Climbers are weak stems attaching themselves to any neighboring object by some special structures and then climbing it. These are of six types. Rootlet climber, a stem climbing by its roots given off from its nodes. For example, pothos, ivy. Hook climber, a weak stem climbing by the help of curved thorns, for example, bougainvillea, or hook, for example, arta botrys, or prickles, for example, climbing rose. 
tendril climber. A weak stem climbing by its slender, leafless, spirally coiled structures known as tendrils. For example, Lethyrus, Passiflora, Cucurbita. Leaf climber. A weak stem climbing by its petioles. For example, Clematis or leaf tips. For example, Gloriosa. Twiner. A long, slender and branched stem which climbs by twining its body round the support. For example, Cascuta, Clitoria timatea, etc. Lianes, a long woody perennial twiner, for example, Hiptage, Camel's Food Climber. Modifications of stem. In some plants, the shoot system gets modified to perform special functions. Aerial modifications of stems. Stems of certain plants undergo extreme degree of modification for definite purpose. Such metamorphosed organs may be stem tendril for climbing, thorn for protection, philoclade for food manufacture and bulbil for vegetative propagation. Thorns. The axillary shoots get modified to thorns. For example, in Bougainvillea, Punica granitum, Durenta, etc. And in Carissa, the terminal bud is modified into pair of thorns. The thorns sometimes bear leaves, flowers and fruits as in Durenta and Prunus and sometimes it become branched as in Flacorchia. Generally, thorns and prickles are considered similar but they differ greatly in origin, position and morphology. The prickles have superficial origin and are mere outgrowths which never bear leaves, flowers or fruits. Also, its position is not axillary or terminal like thorn. It is distributed all over the stem. Stem tendrils some weak stemmed plants produce wiry, coiled, sensitive and delicate organs for climbing. They are called tendrils. These may develop from either the axillary bud or the terminal bud of the stem. In Passiflora, the tendrils develop from the axillary bud. In Cissus quadrangularis and in Vitis vinifera, the terminal bud develops into tendrils. Philoclade. It is a green, flattened or cylindrical succulent stem of unlimited growth. It consists of many nodes and internodes and with leaves either feebly developed or modified into spines. The philoclade functions as leaf and perform photosynthesis, also functions as storage tissue retaining plenty of water and mucilage. For example, Opuntia, Euphorbia, Tirucali. Cladode. A cladode is short green cylindrical or flattened branches of limited growth containing one internode only. For example, Butch's broom. Bulbils. When axillary bud in the stem becomes fleshy and rounded due to storage of food, it is called bulbil. It gets detached from the plant, falls on the ground and develops into a new plant. For example, diosoria, agave, etc. Underground modifications of stem. The underground stems remain buried below the ground and serve for food storage and perination. They are always thick and fleshy, containing a heavy deposit of reserve food material. They produce aerial branches only under favorable conditions. For example, potato. They show different type of modifications. Rhizome. It is a horizontal underground stem that can be distinguished from the root by the presence of nodes and internodes and sometimes bud and scale-like leaves at the nodes. 
they are often thick and accumulate food. For example, ginger, turmeric, ferns. Tuber. It is a swollen end of an underground stem provided with buds on the sides and tip called as eyes which grow into new plants. For example, potato, cypress. Bulb. It is an underground stem consisting of a shortened, convex or slightly conical stem with a terminal bud and numerous scale leaves. The scale leaves may surround the stem in concentric rings called as tunicated or coated as found in onion or the scales may partially overlap each other by their margins only called as scaly as found in tulip. Com. This is a condensed form of rhizome consisting of stout, solid, fleshy underground stem growing in the vertical direction. It is more or less round in shape or often somewhat flattened from top to bottom. It contains heavy deposit of food material. For example, Amorphophallus, Crocus, etc. Functions of stem Primary functions To support and orient the leaves in a manner that they are exposed to maximum sunlight for efficient gaseous exchange during photosynthesis and respiration. To conduct water and minerals from roots to leaves and manufactured food from leaves to different parts of the plant. It bears flowers and fruits. Secondary functions Storage Stems store food and water in plants, for example, potato. Perination The underground stems help tide over the unfavorable growing periods, for example, ginger. Vegetative propagation Stem can be a means of vegetative propagation for example, rose, sugar cane. Photosynthesis. In certain plants like xerophytes, where leaves are reduced, the stem takes up the function of photosynthesis. These stems possess chlorophyll, for example, opuntia. Protection. In some plants, the axillary bud modifies into thorn and protects the plants from animals. For example, citrus, derenta. Climbing. Tendrils or hooks are modified branches or buds. They coil around the support and help the plant to climb. For example, grapevine. The portion of the plant body of the angiosperms having phototropic response is called as the shoot. The plant's shoot consists of stem, leaves, and the reproductive organs. The growing portion at the apex of the shoot is the terminal bud of the plant and by the continued development of this bud and its adjacent tissues, the stem increases in height. The primary functions of the stem are to support the leaves, to conduct water and minerals to the leaves, where they can be converted into usable products by photosynthesis and to transport these products from the leaves to other parts of the plant including the roots. The stem can be erect or weak with several modifications for performing specific functions such as perination, vegetative propagation, food storage, etc.